coming up on this episode, we finally leave Gran Canaria. We have to run away from a storm. We have whales and dolphins, and we have fish with much, much more. Good morning. Today is the day. We're heading off out to the Atlantic Ocean. First ocean crossing. I think we're pretty much prepped as much as we can. We've got fresh fruit and veg, fishing line, fishing rod, sorry. Got my hydrovein rudder on. I just need to put the vein on itself. Done a passage plan as best I could. It will obviously change daily depending on weather and tide and all the rest of it. Uh, but yeah, just gonna fill up the water tanks for the last time. Get my last few bits, my surfboards and stuff back on the boat and then head off. Here we go. fruit and veg disaster already we had we had some netting up underneath the solar and the idea was to keep the fruit and veg underneath the solar but as we've healed over it's all gone off to one side so we're just going to start adjusting this i've just got wayne set up wayne the hydrovane and he's uh it's the first time i've used used him going upwind so we're kind of beating about 50, 50 degrees into the wind at the moment um, just to get round a lot of the island and he seems to be seems to be holding pretty well good on you Wayne Not too I think I rectified it well, should even out the load we're about uh, five hours into the journey Wayne the hydrovane is doing its thing. We are goose winged. So far, so good. Coming to the end of the first day. Uh, we were progressing really well earlier. Uh, lunchtime into early afternoon, we was getting like seven knots. We had quite a bit of wind around the island. But as predicted, when we get sort of into the shadow or down the down the edge of the the outside of the of the island, it's it's kind of dropped quite a bit. Um, it's due to pick up through the night, which is fine. We get back on get back on course. We've had to come a little more south than I wanted to, um, just so we don't go into the shadow of the of, of the island and get becalmed, which is what will happen. So yeah, just first night, get settled in. It takes a few nights to get into it, you know. But uh, hopefully, it's going to be a lovely little sunset, and hopefully, no dramas on the first night. Day two, uh, not a very pleasant first night. Paul was on watch from midnight till three, no, nine till midnight, and uh, had to come and give me a little tap. We was gusting up to 20 knots, so we reefed. Um, no, we didn't reef, what did we do? We put the head sail away. <laughs> we had a nightmare with the head sail. It's been very rolling, the seas are not very, not very good. Um, GoPro never does it justice. Lovely morning though. So I'll have a look at the course in a minute and then um, may have to put a jibe in. I'll have a look. We've had our first disaster, day one in. We had to jibe the boat this morning to change course as the currents pushed us a bit too far east to what I wanted. So we were setting up to do a jibe, um, but when we spun the boat around, the wind was it just picked up crazy speeds. It was hard to control, and we done an uncontrolled jibe not once but twice. But it was the second time, so I had a preventer on, but the preventer was tied onto summit. It probably shouldn't have been. It was um, a shackle for the topping lift on the back of the boom. So that white line on the back there, that's a topping lift that keeps your boom up. Um, and yeah, the preventer was on there. I didn't really trust the other parts on the boom. However, it snapped it clean off. We jibed. So I was close to just heading down to Mandillo on the Cape Verde to get it looked at, but we will just persevere with it, hope for the best. And uh, yeah, just stay the course. 
Hope we get to Barbados. We're gonna, we're gonna go fishing. Gonna use a little lure just to start with, test everything out, make sure the rig's good. And then we got some big boy lures for the big boy fish later on in the passage. There she goes. Yeah, I think that's a Mai Mai. Right, all stop there because you're right at your thing. Let me just, is it or is it a Mai Mai? I'm going to spare you seeing the killing and the gutting of the fish, but uh, it made quite a mess on the back of the boat. I think I need to practice my filleting skills. However, we've got two nice fillets of fresh Mai Mai. That should be, you know, chuck a bit of rice with this. It should be able to feed all three of us for lunch. Look at that, fresh as fresh. Good morning and welcome to day three on board the Warrior. So uh, that flurry of excitement there, uh, catching that fish first thing, that was nice. Um, yesterday's flurry of excitement was not so good, having that jibe and snap of the top and lift off the, uh, off the boom. We've done a little makeshift repair because there was gonna be some big winds coming. So yeah, here we go with another day, day three. Just had our shower up under the uh, under the mast there, and it's time to do a little bit of washing. So we've got salt water, clean your clothes, but what I do is I then get rid of the salt water, and I've got a cockpit shower, I fill it with fresh, and then get the salt. So that's, hopefully, our clothes clean. Good morning, it's Monday, day four. I am absolutely knackered. Winds uh, picked up a lot over the night. I saw before I come off watch at midnight, still blowing 20 now, it's calmed right down. We've had to put the head sail away during the night. I had to come up. Um, I was meant to have had the good watch last night. Every Because of our watch systems, three hours on, six hours off. Every third day, you'll get from midnight to six to sleep. So I think last night, I, that was mine last night, and I probably got two hours sleep altogether. I'm not really enjoying it, if I'm honest. I, I thought I would do after the, the passage down, the six day passage down from Gibraltar to Canaries. Everything was nice, everything was going well. I think that disaster, 24 hours in, jiving the boat, ripping the, uh, the preventer, ripping off the top and lift, it's just put me on edge. I'm just on edge. So yeah, I'm not really enjoying it. I'm hoping maybe in a few days when everything's, you know, pointing the right way, I'll, um, I'll settle in a bit more. But you know, the seas were really, really uncomfortable last night a few seas waves from the back waves from the side it's just yeah i don't know i'm just knackered i need to sleep but i can so fortunately not a great start to the passage the fish was pretty cool though Waves have certainly picked up, the wind's picked up. We've seen quite frequently 20 knot gusts in, in, into the mid 20s, and the swell is also picked up and it's coming from all over the place. I'll try and show you, but I don't think you get a good gauge on the GoPro. quite a lot and to the point the last three hours it's basically taken us due due west sometimes north northwest i could put in a jive and start heading southwest again to pick up the uh pick up the trade winds down down the bottom further down 
I know what will happen. As soon as I put that jive and start heading down, the winds will shift back to what to what the report is are, are saying they're supposed to be. So I'm just going to leave it, run out overnight on whatever it's given, uh, look at my chart in the morning, and then I will make a decision as to what I want to do. I'd imagine I'll be putting in a controlled jive and heading back down south a little bit more rather than this westerly course. Hopefully overnight it does sort itself out and come around again. Sea states come down, like today's just been an absolute nightmare. It's been waves from the east and the north, which has made it super uncomfortable. Just rolling around like a pig. Um, and it, that's what's been knocking us off course as well. At one point we were facing up towards Canada. That's how much it's been knocking us off. Um, you can't really tell by the GoPro, but I mean, the waves, the waves, I mean, they're not big, but good three meters. Um, enough to chuck the boat around, that's for sure. Anyway. I'll be coming off watch in an hour and a half. I'll do some dinner for the boys and then I'll be back on at midnight. My hydro vein seems to be making some clunking noises. So we're just checking all the bolts and fittings. Obviously with movements of the boat, it can rattle things loose. I'm gonna go back down below into the lazarette while he holds the nuts on this side so I can tighten them up. One thing I've not shown you guys yet is the actual passage plan. So here we have Gran Canaria. So you wanna look at the purple line. So we left Las Palmas, come down the island. The yellow line there is my actual track, but I'll come back to that in a minute. So the plan was to come here. I didn't wanna to go too far under the island because there was um, like a, a wind shadow. However, we was fine we we kind of carried on a little we went a little bit dead for a while and then uh, as you can see we head all the way down to this waypoint which is about 180 nautical miles northwest of cape verde islands this will put us deep into the trade winds which will then take us all the way across to Barbados, and then we're going to go around barbados up into bridgetown I'm um, not going to worry about that part just yet. Um, now this is how far we've actually come so far. We've been, uh, been at sea five full days pretty much. And as you can see what happened was the wind with the hydrovane, it follows the wind. And we didn't bother making any jibes. It took us, took us out uh, quite a bit more west than I was expecting. And as you can see here, we put a jibe in earlier today. I didn't film it, of course, because I'm rubbish at this. So now we're heading back down towards the 20 degrees latitude, um, which is gonna be not quite a dead west run. It's a 260 degrees run west into Barbados. So it's gonna take us about 24 hours-ish to start coming down um, onto that line and then home run in. So that's the plan couldn't believe our luck we got some pilot whales come to the boat at least we think they're pilot whales if anyone knows any different please leave a comment uh, I ran to the bow and I'll be honest when I saw a bigger than a dolphin creature um, I immediately had a flashback of the killer whale incident however it was so cool to see these things if you watched a couple of episodes ago you'd see I had a squid on the deck well out here in the Atlantic you get flying fish I found one the other day got rid of it and there's another one up here it's only a baby by the look of it it's pretty dry and crispy he's been there for a while don't know if you can see right on the horizon, you, there's some sails. Um, I was told when you cross the Atlantic, you can go weeks without seeing any other vessel. We actually saw quite a few on our passage. This one here is called Twister, and it's owned by the Ocean Nomads. They've got some photos that I'm just waiting for. It's a beautiful boat. We're uh, proceeding on a 200, but uh, after um, another 200 miles. 
So these guys actually made contact with us over the radio and it was really nice to actually speak to someone else. Uh, 17 persons, uh, we are sailing uh, under the flag of ocean nomads. Wade with the warrior, roger that, ocean nomads, I believe I've heard of that before. Um, yeah, we're going to hold this course probably overnight uh, until early in the morning, get to around 18 degrees of latitude before we make the move heading to uh, Barbados. We are three persons on board ourselves. Over. Excellent. So not only was it great to hear uh, other voices, I also learned a valuable lesson off these guys. Uh, with regards to weather routing. Um, they were going to Martinique, which is north of Barbados, but yet they were heading very, very south. The reason for this is they were running from a low pressure, a storm that was coming down. Um, I then took a seven day forecast instead of the usual four day forecast, saw it coming and also then started to run south, as I will explain shortly. It's only a little baby one, you can see him jumping. So this lure is a winner, it's only a baby, but get a couple of good fillets out of that. We've caught two fish off two different lures, um, different lures were supposed to have caught different fish but we caught, looks like my my on both. We're going to try something different, <laughs> it, I'm just going to say it, it looks like a butt plug with a hook on it, <laughs> this better be a tuna butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's uh, get it on and get him out. Deploying the butt plug. does good morning we are into the 10th day it is Sunday the 4th of December um, I've got to be a bit quiet because I was just gone off watch so he's snoring away downstairs the forecast said that we was due today and tomorrow we was due to have no wind the wind was dropping and uh, for once it's actually come true with 4.7 knots of wind and we are doing one and a half knots through the water which means that we are we've got current pushing us mostly the sails have been flogging all night to the point where i had to come up when i was off watch about three o'clock this morning and i reefed i dropped some of the main sail um only because the outhaul is only a 10 mil thick line that's the that's the line that holds the back of the sail to the boom if that chafes and snaps, then basically we've had it. We'd, we'll have to go for one uh, on, to, on the first reef for the rest of the trip. So I decided while it's flogging, if you heard that, um, our reef just to save that outhaul. When we start getting a bit of wind in a couple of days, hopefully we can try and catch up some, some lost ground. Thought I'd give you guys an update as to where we are, what we're doing. So hopefully you can see this on my phone. I get weather updates. Um, now, here's the Caribbean, this side. Um, and then further there, that's the that's Cape Verde Islands there. I don't know, it's a bit of a glare, sorry. Um, so we're currently around about here. So the blue, the light stuff is light winds. And you see this big dark stuff that's big wind so we've got a low pressure coming over if I fast forward you can see that low pressure is coming towards us and down and then it takes all the wind so you see that band of blue that's no wind that's pretty much where we're sat at the moment we need to get down 
to this band it's, it's lower than where we want to go it's, we don't really want to go to the lower latitudes because you get you can get close to the doldrums however we need to go and get that wind and we need to get away from that danger area so i showed you the our course before um and the plan was from grand canaria there follow that which is now a black line because we passed it and then the purple line in to into barbados as you can see we've come a lot south and um, we're actually tracking southwest which isn't too bad but we do need to keep coming south and then we're going to go dead west and probably have to come slightly north to get back into barbados but that's because this low pressure is here and it's like i said it's sweeping in if we get caught up in that it's gonna chew us up and probably spit us out in portugal or something which is not good um so that's the plan it's going to add a bit of time to our passage unfortunately but um it's the only option we got we need to chase that wind my cabin is at the front of the boat up in the bow this area uh, i've not been able to use it at sea normally because if we're if it's quite lumpy seas it does throw you around but the last few days it's been fairly steady nice kind of calm seas so i've managed to get in my own bunk and the last night the watch that i was on meant that i could sleep from midnight till six and i was so looking forward to it i thought no disturbs no no disruptions up in the front cabin and about four o'clock this morning i heard a whack on the side of the boat and a lot of flopping around and i knew what it was straight away that's a big one so he was flapping around for quite a bit bless him so yeah that was my sleep ruined again back to the sea you go quick update on our passage um as i as i showed you on the uh weather grip that big low pressures here which has made us um run south so there is a, a band of wind that we're just into here um that low that's here has taken all the wind so there's a load of dead air here so that's why we've come down to get in the wind that's that we're sat in at the moment we could be a little bit deeper in it but we're gonna uh, to, just now i shall show you we have just uh changed course and we are now heading west um we are kind of pointing at where are we aiming at probably not barbados no we're a lot a lot more south but it doesn't matter because that low here dips down and it does come close to us so i want to stay on a sort of less than west heading to stay safe and then when that goes it is due to, to disappear up here in a, in, in a few days then i can i can start coming a little bit more west bit of, put a bit of north in it and uh run into barbados so that's the update and like i say we've just changed and we're no longer on a uh, broad reach we are dead running with the uh pole out Oh, the beauty can you pass me the rum please mate so a little trick that i've seen people do is they pour alcohol through the gills of the fish and it's meant to kill them he's drunk yeah he's i think drunk. i think i think we got him suitably drunk but just to be sure i don't want to have to bludgeon him again like the last one so we've got rum flavored fish for dinner We are now officially halfway across the Atlantic Ocean. We've just caught a fish, as you saw, which is kind of like a nice little uh, celebratory thing as well. But we also have a little bubbly. Hey. I've heard people say that uh, when you're out in the Atlantic, you can go weeks without seeing anybody, but we've seen a vessel at least. Well, I think the longest time we didn't see a vessel was four days. So we had this one and he come on the, uh, he come on the radio earlier as well. Day 19. I was expecting to be very close to the island by now. Um, the way it was going when we left Gran Canaria heading down to Cape Verde. 
uh, managed to shave about half a day off from passage. So yeah, it would have been probably tomorrow, the next day getting in. However, we've got about six days. That low pressure, as I said before, made us have to run south for three days with fickle winds, rubbish winds. We got becalmed for like a total of 24 hours, I think, not in one hit, but over the space of a few days. And now we're trying to track back up again. Uh, pulled out heading downwind, it's just a bit soul destroying, you know, we was we was on such good time for a decent, decent run across the Atlantic and then that big low pressure messed it all up, but that's sailing for you, you know, you've got to sail what you got, but we're making headway now, we've got good winds and we should have good winds all the way in, um, all the way into the island for the next sort of six, seven days, I'm hoping six days, our passage plan conservatively for seven. But the way the winds are and the way we've been moving, I reckon six, six and a half days. I can't wait for a big rum cocktail. Beautiful morning though. Uh, I've not really done any filming the last few days because nothing's happened. It's very mundane, which is good. I don't want excitement and stuff. Oh, my wall maker is leaking. That's not great. I don't know where from. I'll have to do some investigating when I get on the, get in the marina. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, no fish, unfortunately. I'll put the rod out. So uh, hopefully we get some fresh fish today. a while to do this um, because it's been pretty bumpy out at sea and I've not really wanted to go forward unless I had to but I'm gonna go and put up the Q flag the Canaries flag is still up there but like I said I just I ain't bothered but we're about four days out now um, so I'm gonna go do that now before I forget so that's another little landmark for us um, fortunately yeah this trip has taken a bit longer than anticipated but that's not due to anything we've done that's just literally the the weather um, that big storm that come down we had to run away from so I'll stick this up and then when I get close I'm gonna put the ensign back on the back I took I took that down because the winds were just shredding it a little bit so um, that's back in the locker but if I remember I'll put that up and then ready to go and check into Barbados day 24 hopefully in the final day we're 17 miles away from the island now um, i put a waypoint in just south of the island i reckon we'll be there about two o'clock i'm expecting to see the island mid-afternoon i reckon going at this speed but yeah pretty much done it i'm not going to speak too soon i've still got 70 miles to go yeah I'd, I'd, I'd check in with you a bit later on when we get close to the island and i'll give you a little land home managed to avoid squalls all the way across the Atlantic so far. We're not far from the island and I think we're hitting our first one now. Filled in the head sail and uh, we just got the main out reefed. So we're just gonna see what happens with it, just run with it, run downwind and see how long it lasts for. Hopefully not too long. It's not very pleasant. We haven't seen big winds yet, thankfully. We're gusting up to about 25. Looks like it looks like it's gone over the top of us now. There is another one over to the south. But, uh, the decks have got a good wash now. So 
that could be one of many. I don't mind it during the day now, but when we start hitting the island and going up to the anchorage tonight, I don't really want to have to deal with that in the dark, going up the side of the island. So let's get them out of the way now, shall we? 24 and a half days and I can see land. Land ho! It's very, very faint. There's no point me even trying to show you on the GoPro. You won't see it. I can just make it out on the horizon. <laughs> I'm not going to say I've made it yet because we've still got about 12 hours. Uh, no, sorry. Eight hours worth of travelling to do before we get to the anchorage. However, I can see Barbados. I don't believe it. I've just crossed the Atlantic. I've only been sailing properly for about seven months. I've done my first offshore passage. If you look back from my episodes, my first offshore passage was Cherbourg. That was about seven months ago. From seven months of, yeah, just sort of bouncing around to crossing the second biggest ocean in the world. I feel like I've, uh, I've achieved a fair bit, to be honest. Um, so I'll, I'll come back on when we've got a better, better sight of land and hopefully I can show you the uh, Shady Island. Good morning. Look where we are. It's not very sunny right now. We come in dark, dark, dark. So there's no point filming it, unfortunately. I mean, I showed you the best I could with the island yesterday afternoon when we found it, when we found land. And then we come around the south, followed up the west of the island into the anchorage at dark and proceeded to drink quite a bit of wine. <laughs> so we're up and I'm gonna get into the marina hopefully shortly I've got a, the windlass didn't work last night coming into the marina uh, into the anchorage uh, so we need to have a quick look at that um, so I can weigh anchor otherwise it's by hand which isn't gonna be great um, and then into the marina and I will crack on with boat jobs uh, in the meantime much needed coffee and we're just so happy to be here you know that's the Atlantic done I can't believe it across the Atlantic after seven months of sailing I've done an ocean crazy I've been on the island for a week um, I've not been able to finish this episode because I just wanted a little bit of time to reflect on the undertaking of crossing the Atlantic it all seems like a bit of a blur now looking back there's certain things look especially going through the footage editing the footage I, I'm remembering certain things but you know every day you just you get up there's ocean you, you know you you go on watch you come off watch you cook it kind of molded into one don't get me wrong I'm kind of glad that there wasn't any major drama 24 hours in wasn't the best um, with that with that jibe it um, shook my confidence a little bit um, but what I thought I'd do is give some tips not a lesson, I'm, I'm nowhere near experience, experience enough to, to give anyone a lesson or tell you how you should do it. I just thought I'd let you uh, into some things that I've learned. I've been given tips um, from very experienced people from my home marina, from marinas uh, since I've been traveling, people that I've met along the way, and I implemented some of these tips um, and they worked, they were good. So I thought I will impart them on, onto you if you're looking at doing a crossing, you can use them, you can't use them. Like I say, it's not a lesson. Um, so first and foremost you need to remember is if you are the skipper of the boat uh, you are in charge you are you have overall responsibility of what happens from passage planning weather routing departure all the way through to um, to food supply and rationing if need be uh, if anything goes wrong it, ultimately it's on you you know you can't blame the newest member of the crew so it's all your fault it is on you you need to make sure everything is is in order um you can delegate so delegation will work sometimes but when it comes to rationing as you saw you know we hit that storm i took it upon myself to say right guys we need to start holding back some of the tin food just in case you know anything could happen another load could have come down what i didn't want to be doing is spanking all the food in one go having lovely meals and then and then you know just eating pasta on its own just for the last sort of four or five days you don't want to be doing that so i took it upon myself 
to take control of the rations which which you should as a skipper okay you're not being a control freak um don't let anyone confuse that it's not being a control freak you have to be in control yes that's your job as the skipper of the boat uh, the next uh, tip, you know, the next thing that you, a big thing, very big thing is water on board. You need to make sure you're going to have enough water to get across the whole, um, the whole Atlantic. Unfortunate, I've got a water maker. I've got two tanks, one aft, one forward. The water maker puts into the forward tank. So it only takes a component in that machine to go wrong and I start putting salt water into that tank. I've contaminated half of my water. It's gone. So water con conservation is very important. Um, guys, they can drink as much water as they want. You know, they have their bottles, they can fill up the water as much as they like. Um, so you're not depriving anybody of water. You know, the there's no deprivation of water. They let, they let your crew drink as much as they want. However, be very mindful. We couldn't shower every day. Um, I've got a solar bag, as I've already shown you. I've showered a solar bag, it's 20 liters. You fill that up, all three of us could have a shower. Um, we decided, not me, we come up with the idea, every third day we will have a shower. Uh, when you come off watch every day, we got a load of baby wipes and we use baby wipes to keep ourselves clean. And that worked, you know, we kept it, uh, uh, my water maker's 30 litres an hour. It's not a lot, but it's, it's decent. I could just about keep up until one day, and thankfully it was at the end, near the end of the passage. Um, one of the crew was in the toilet. Now you've got the tap, lift up tap and the separate like uh force uh, the, the bit it's basically a shower head that comes out that's that's where the water comes out so you wash your hands under there and you can lift it up and put it as a shower one of the crew um wow a fish just jumped out the water that was a big fish sorry uh, i get sidetracked so easy so he stood up from the toilet um you hear me say stood up i'll explain this again i'll explain this in a minute he didn't notice he knocked the tap he left um, I don't know how long after I went into the toilet and I have got a mobile swimming pool. He has flooded the toilet. The tap was running. Um, it sits so uh, there was about I worked out there was a quarter of a liter, uh, a quarter of my fresh water tank had gone. About 70 liters of water had gone down the sink and then when the when the shower head swung over onto the floor. Um, from that point, it would have been very hard to have kept up. I would have had to run the water maker for a good couple of hours, but. And this is the but, this is why I was very careful with the water. I found out I don't have a lot of um, energy. My solar cannot keep up with my navigation, the AIS, the fridge, the water maker. So I had to be very power conscious. Okay, so that's another tip for you. Make sure you have enough either solar or wind or hydro to, to top up your batteries every day. I had to run the engine every second or third day, then make water. So yes, be very conscious of your water. Again, you know, you don't deprive them of water. It's um, just being sensible. Uh, one of the guys also come up with the idea of using baby wipes after you've been to the toilet. Um, instead of using water to wash your hands, if it's just the wee, you use a baby wipe to clean and then alcohol gel. If it's, some, if it's the next number up, then you use um, uh, antibacterial wipes for your hands. You clean all the toilet area and then you use antibacterial gel. So this is, this is good hygiene upkeep, all right? Um, you need to make sure that you're on the ball with hygiene. You're not being OCD, you're just being clean, all right? There's no such, anyone who, who says you're OCD for being clean are just dirty, I believe. That's my opinion. If you can't keep yourself clean, yeah, you're gonna be the dirty kid in the marina. Nobody wants that name. Don't be the dirty kid in the marina. Make sure your hygiene's on top, okay? Um, and gas, gas was a big thing. Um, if you've crossed the Atlantic uh, east to west, there's a good chance you've been through Europe and you get camping gas. It's, uh, it's got a Z on the end, not gas, it's gas. They're only small, they're 3.5 kilograms and they don't last as long as what the big Calagas ones do. So you have to be conservative. As it happens, I was saying to the guys, look, you know, we was having two brews a day, plus lunch and dinner, cooking, you know, all the rest of it. And then I started, cutting back on it guys one brew a day we're gonna run out of gas soon we're gonna run out of gas soon one of them's like nah 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 we'll be all right getting to port we got into port on the tuesday we got into the marina on the tuesday wednesday evening the next day i was halfway through dinner the gas went um so be very conservative with your gas you know if, if, if you like your teas and your coffees you might just have to cut back a little bit again you're not being a control freak you're not controlling it you're just being sensible so that you can get hot meals all the way through the trip there's no point doing it all in one go um, 
the biggest thing guys the biggest thing i would say is choose your crew wisely make sure you know the people you're taking i kind of knew these guys um, you need to make sure they're competent. You need to make sure that um, if you can leave 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 people on the helm, they're not going to crash drive your boat. And if they do, that you know, let's make sure they're nice enough to pay for any damages and you know all that sort of thing. So you need to know them well enough that that will happen. Um, it, it was more of a crew of convenience for us, to be honest. These guys got their own boats and they want to come across the Atlantic. They wanted the experience. I needed hands. So for us, it was more of a crew of convenience. If you've got time and you know people, choose your crew. Um, there was, again, you know, even with friends and family, there's gonna be moments where things will get heated, maybe you have little fallouts. You need to make sure that they're, they're happy with being told what to do. As a skipper, for me, safety was key. If I had to keep repeating the same thing about safety, please don't do this, please make sure you do that, blah, blah, blah. It becomes very uncomfortable and it sets a bad vibe on the boat. And it happened a few times, I'm not gonna lie, it did happen a few times, but that's why you need to sort of, you know, before we left, I said, this is how, uh, on my boat, this is, and this is what I've been told by, by very experienced people, do this, do that. And I took those tips on board. But then when you come up and you've had to ask them time and time again, it can be very uncomfortable. Um, talking of uncomfortable, toilet i was told in fact this is this is something across the biscay um when you sit on the toilet seat if the boat's moving around you move around you break the toilet seat it happened across the biscay one of the crew on the biscay turned around and said well actually i just lift both seats up and sit on the bolt and that works um one of my crew coming not on this trip but uh, a previous trip broke the toilet well it didn't break it become loose even though i had asked please sit down we you always do a sit down we at sea male and female obviously female it's safety if the boat's moving and you're standing up your wing you you can hurt yourself sit down we all the time don't use the seat the crew one crew in particular forgot broke the seat so a tip i was told tape the seats together so if they lift one they both come up they have no option but to sit down that is a safety that's a safety point and it's you know um it's not going to break your boat you don't have to keep on and on and on and again, hygiene, if, if someone's got a, a thing about weeing on the floor, then make sure you keep, uh, you don't have to keep asking them. You don't want to be asking them all the time. This is the whole hygiene thing. Hygiene is super important. As a saturation diver, I live in a chamber. Um, if there's, you know, it, it, things in humid conditions can set off, a, a, you know, a lot of uh, bacteria and viruses and people can get ill. If you're real halfway at sea, you've got stomach bugs and you've got this flying around, you're gonna be down crew members. They're gonna be in bed and then that spreads as well. You could be down a whole crew. So hygiene is very important. Um, again, you're not being OCD, you're just being clean. Uh, so those are just a few tips um, that I've learned on the passage. If anyone's thinking of doing it, take it on board, don't take it on board. Like I say, this isn't a lesson. I am not nowhere near experienced enough to be given lessons, but it's what worked for me. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. If you are crossing the Atlantic, then uh, fair winds if you if you have got any questions anything else please leave a comment if there are any more tips then please leave a comment uh i hope you enjoyed this episode so maddie comes in a couple of days uh and yeah we're gonna hopefully have some fun and start traveling around the islands hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed notification bell it will let you know i'm having trouble at the moment uploading data is super expensive here and Wi-Fi is not the best. I need to try and find some kind of restaurant or cafe to get Wi-Fi. So I have no idea when this is going to be out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you all later.